Good Saturday morning, everybody, from the First Defense Doppler 3 Weather Center in downtown Memphis. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with the latest edition of News Channel 3's video weather blog, Weather Over Time. This is your opportunity to check in and see what's going on with the Mid-South forecast. And the basic watchword is going to be hot, followed closely by humid, and looking at the possibility of a few thunderstorms out there, but not enough to cause any major concerns out across the Mid-South. Forecast at the bottom of the page, again, partly to mostly cloudy off and on during the day today. Winds out of the south west and temperatures today going back into the lower to mid 90s heading into later on tonight winds out of the west and mainly clear skies with temperatures going back into the mid to upper 70s for much of the mid-south area so again definitely uncomfortable for much of the area again today so far as of this morning as by the time we record this we do not have anything going on in the way of a heat advisory from the national weather service but that could change so keep it tuned to news channel 3 for further updates on that and we'll pass those along to you on air and online. WREG.com is the place to go to for, again, the best opportunity for weather in the Mid-South for your complete Mid-South forecast there. Sunshine galore on the Ole Miss campus. Have to thank University of Memphis or University of Mississippi, rather, for putting up these great cameras across campus. Not many other college campuses around the Mid-South do this. Matter of fact, hardly any. So this is a great opportunity to uh, see what's going on weather across parts of the area. Crosby Hall construction came from Crosby Hall to the Student Union in the center portion of your screen where a major renovation is taking place. Plenty of sunshine and a few support people up and going as we see a few parking lots filled up, uh, spaces filled up there. Track and field cam, again, beautiful sunshine out there, very much on the hot and humid side and not much going on for early this morning in and around there. Back to Olive Branch, Mississippi at Mayor OB's webcam, Sam Reichert's webcam, looking back to the northwest on the weather underground system, showing a few clouds drifting on through but beyond that just not really all that much out there for yesterday high temperature was 80 degrees well the low temperature was 80 degrees that was way above normal and way above normal on the highs temperatures two degrees from the century mark and that was the record high for today as well 100 degrees set back in 2012 a record low of 56, which would feel awfully nice right about now, but not going to be happening. Normal is 72 for a low. Yesterday's low in Memphis was 80 degrees, and that's about as good as it got for us. No rainfall to report behind for the month by about two and a third inches, and we're still ahead for the year thanks to all that surplus of rain we picked up in February and March. But as of right now, looking at a very dry month of June into the Mid-South area, so hopefully some more rainfall heading our direction pretty soon. Chances of showers and thunderstorms will be possible, just not entirely likely as we get into the course of the rest of the day today. We'll be seeing potential for showers and thunderstorms. If you're looking on the map, again, the best possibility of showers is where you're looking in and around the area of this green shaded area here from northern Mississippi back into around portions of West Tennessee. So that's going to be the main area we're going to be looking for the possibility of scattered showers. Does not look like much at this time. It's going to be, again, chances but that's going to be about it. Isolated areas of con more concentrated areas of thunderstorms possible out there and temperatures for highs later on this afternoon for the peak heating time of the day, mid to upper 90s. Combine that with the humidity out there and temperatures will be pushing heat advisory territory. So please keep that in mind as you head out the door to do whatever you do today. Yard work, try to save that until the cooler parts of the day if at all possible. If not, get in the shade when possible. Take lots of breaks, drink lots of water to put back what your body sweats away and keep an eye on those working or exercising around you. Heading into this evening, temperatures again very toasty by News Channel 3 at 10 back in the lower to mid 80s by the time News Channel 3 at 10 is on the air. Daybreak tomorrow morning back in the mid to upper 70s. A few lower 70s could be possible but not entirely likely. Numbers tomorrow morning for church and Sunday school back in the mid to upper 80s to lower 90s. Rest of the day, spotty showers and thunderstorms for the area as we go through Sunday. Right on in through Sunday afternoon and evening, temperatures once again in the high 90s. And better chances of showers and thunderstorms by the time we hit News Channel 3 at 10 is what looks to be a cold front of sorts begins to drop into the Mid-South. And that will improve our chances for rainfall as we get into next week as well. But tomorrow, today, and for the early parts of the weekend, chances of showers and thunderstorms will be isolated only and that's going to be about it for Sunday temperatures back in the mid 90s with again that slight chance of a shower or thunderstorm on Sunday then the better possibility of thunderstorms happens on Monday as that front begins to wander through 
Again, chances of showers and thunderstorms not exactly hugely widespread, but at least we will get a more widespread chance than what we have seen for a while, helping to hopefully eliminate that deficit of rainfall that we have seen across the area. Temperatures drop by just a bit as we get into Wednesday and Thursday, back below normal by just a little bit. And we continue again to see the potential of more showers and thunderstorms toward the end of this next week, right on into next weekend. And by Monday, Independence Day next, heading into the mid-90s, shower and thunderstorm chances could be a bit of a problem, especially for outdoor activities preceding the fireworks by next Monday. We'll be keeping a close eye on that, so keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for updates there. Thanking Deborah J54 for a gorgeous sunrise from around the Humboldt area this morning. So thanks very much for looking at that. And if you have any sunrise, sunset tonight, weather pictures in general from around the Mid-South, please tweet them to me, Aonic underscore WREG3. We can't post them if you don't send them, and we'd love to be able to see your pictures across the Mid-South, so please let me know what the weather is doing in and around your area. And tune in for the latest weather forecast available throughout the weekend. My forecast available on Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3 on the EAB network, so definitely a good opportunity to tune in and get the forecast there. Speaking of radio, this is Field Day coming up today and into tomorrow. Don't forget to join us tomorrow morning for News Channel 3 Daybreak. But after that, we'll have CBS News Sunday morning. Field Day is, where, is sort of the day for ham radio operators around the country and around the world. You may see operating sites where some or none usually are. This is an opportunity to work in the field. So if you would like to know more about where exactly to go to and the different groups that are going to be going around out there, there are plenty of websites to go to into around the area, ARRL.org. You can find out more information there. Kind of difficult to see with the glare on the screen, but several sites, including in Germantown, Olive Branch, Arkabutla Lake, Oxford, Mississippi, Truman, Arkansas, east of Dyersburg, Jackson, Tennessee. Go to ARRL.org, the American Radio Relay League, and find out more by clicking on the Field Day Locator site. You can find out a lot more there about what amateur radio is, how you can get your license, how you can get on the air. Great challenge right now. See if you can get your license between now now and next year's field day. Something you can try, something your kids can try. Again, you don't. there's no age limit to being a ham radio operator. You don't need to know Morse code anymore, something that's kind of chagrined a lot of veteran amateur radio operators, but it's a very handy thing to have. I've got my five words per minute, so I know Morse code, and that's something that can help in an emergency, and so can amateur radio. If you'd like to know more about this, please check out my various social media websites, or if you'd like to email me for more information, austin.onic at wreg.com for more details on that. If you see these people out and about around the area, tents and antennas strung up in various places, ask them about what it, it takes to become an amateur radio operator. The test isn't that much. It's a good opportunity to learn more and to help your community. So field day today and into tonight and overnight into Sunday. If you'd like to know more, again, ARRL.org or check out my social media websites. That'll wrap it up for today's edition of News Channel 3's video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Thanks for joining me. More information coming up on WREG.com and also on News Channel 3 throughout the day, tonight, and into the rest of the weekend. Thanks for joining me.